Good morning. Welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's morning docket. Today is Thursday, August 30th, 11 a.m. Uh, both the morning docket and the afternoon docket are going to be the violations docket. When your case is called, please step forward to the microphone. Uh, state your name uh, clearly into the microphone. If you're going to be providing testimony, please be prepared to be sworn in. One more note, if you have an electronic device or cell phone, please silence it or put it on vibrate. Mr. Chair, if I may, there is a preliminary matter. Yes. Uh, case number five, Angela Thrasher and Charles Thrasher, Jr., Haven Place Incorporated, trading as Haven Place 400 to uh, 402 North Haven Street has been postponed, and that case will be uh, on a future docket. So I'm with the first case, Sharice Haywood and Jennifer Hernandez, Red Eye Shift LLC, trading as Night Shift 1725 South Ponca Street, the Class BD7 Beer Wine Liquor License and Class Adult AE Adult Entertainment License, a violation of Alcoholic Beverages Rule 4.01A, Sales to Minors, and a violation of Adult Entertainment Rule 3.05A, Incorporation of Liquor License Rules and Regulations to Applicable Licensees. For the record, Melvin J. Kanetsky representing the uh, licensee. Good morning. Would all those who are going to testify please raise your right hands? We swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Will this be an admission or denial, Mr. Well, Kinesky? we'll do it because it's so hot out. We'll do an admission. Okay. As to each? As, well, yes, so that we feel they're together, but I need to say I'll make that argument. The only good thing is they were asking for Crown Royal Apple. That sort of pushed them up my, my block a little bit. Why you like that? Anybody drinks Crown Royal is okay. Oh, okay. I, I, mean, I, I thought it was the apple. We could take a poll. I bet you all raise their hands back here. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. You but know, we often call you the crown royal of. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to Poland too, and so <laughs> by my castle. Um, did they want to offer anything yeah. by way of explanation? There, it, this is the first time that they've been before the board, and there was a miscommunication. Normally, what happens is when you go there, not that you all have to go there, but you will get checked at the door by a doorman, and then once you get in, they thought the bartender would think you were checked. In this case, the Doorman said he checked. They saw the video. He didn't check. So he had lied to him as a result of that. Now the new process is they get checked at the door and also the bartender checks. The person who did it was um, suspended for about four days. You know, uh, say if you didn't do it, don't lie to me and, you know, think I have to go ahead and do it. So that's the kind of uh, situation uh, that is. And it, it's not the kind of place that has a, a history, you know, uh, with this licensee, and I think they've remedied the situation. And am I correct that they've had the license for about a year? About a year. And before that was uh, the night shift, now it's the red eye shift. But it's, you know, the worst thing that could happen is that the 95 would fall on it and take it out. If you know where it is, it's under 95 on, on Ponca Street. No wonder they're drinking there. <laughs> it would be scary. All right. <laughs> um, no tolls, though. Okay. Um, were you there, uh, Inspector, and were they cooperative with yeah. you? Okay, the commissioners have questions? No questions. No questions. Anything further, Mr. Kodansky? No, we submit them. Okay, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the charging documents, the testimony received, the proffer from counsel, uh, and the admissions, uh, I would find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, on April 18, 2018, and a violation of Adult Entertainment Rule 3.05, small a, on uh, April 18, 2018. It being their first violation, I would impose a fine of $300 as to each for a total of $600 fines and give them 30 days to pay. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01A, Sales to Minors, on April 18, 2018, and Adult Entertainment Rule 3.05A on April 18, 2018, and I concur with a $300 fine as to each violation, total 630 days to pay. I too find a violation of alcoholic beverage rule 4.01A, as well as a violation of the adult entertainment rule 3.05A, and would concur with a $300 uh, fine for each. Thank you. Thank you. Admin fee? Yes, administrative fee as well. Thank you. 
like to call exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department Report, Detective Greenhill. Board Exhibit 2, Baltimore City Liquor Board Investigation Report, Inspector Perez. Thank you. I'm calling the next case. Ronald Carback, John Curran, and Christian Kozak, Morta Incorporated, trading as Mount Royal Tavern, 1204 West Mount Royal Avenue. There's a Class BD7 beer wine liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors. I should have said this when we started, for those who have not been here before. We are being recorded and being televised, so when you speak, you need to speak uh, clearly and into the microphones, and you may have to spell your name for the reporter down here to my left, okay? Gentlemen, what are your names? All right. I'm Ronald H. Carback. And you, sir? Chris Kozak. Okay. Good morning. Would you all raise your right hands, please? And, Inspector? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, so, gentlemen, you're uh, charged with a sale to minor on July 12, 2018, and I note that this is the first such violation, and this license has been with you since 1985. That's correct. Um, so, what happened on July 12? Do you, and first of all, do you admit or deny this? No, we admit it. It's okay. uh, our bartender who has been with us since we opened and before. before He's been <laughs> over, over 40 years. I hired him when he was a student, and I was a student. But anyway. Micah? Yes. yes. I used um, to go there myself a long time ago. <laughs> great place. <laughs> Very expensive these days. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, uh, John, the bartender, and he's our manager also, ran upstairs uh, to get some change out of the safe. Meanwhile, the doorman, who is always carding, got behind the bar. The cadet came through. John came back down, assumed that he'd been carded, and served them. Okay. And he's, he's, you know, after 40 years in the bar, he's he pretty he's savvy about that. that. He okay. knows better than that. Yeah. So um, he just assumed that he'd been carded. Any problems, Inspector? No. Commissioners? No questions. No questions. Okay. We appreciate your being candid with us. Um, on the basis, then, of the materials contained in the charging documents, the testimony, the admission, uh, I find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, on July 12, 2018. I'd impose a $300 fine and give you 30 days to pay it. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on July 12, 2018, and given um, the history of no violations since 1985, uh, I concur with the $300 fine and 30 days of pay. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01A and would uh, concur with the imposition of a $300 fine. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. I'd like to call Zippus for the record. Board of Zippus 1, Baltimore State Police Department report, oh, Detective right. Greenhill. Board is the two Baltimore City Liquor Board report. Thank you. Agent Chris Amalis, thank you. Calling the next case. Elmer Moore, East Baltimore Lodge, number 1043, Incorporated, trading as East Baltimore Lodge 1043 IBPOE of W, uh, 2008 through 10 Harford Road. This is a Class C beer, wine, and liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, and a violation of Rule 4.20D, small double I, Class C licensees, may not be open to the general public. Are you Mr. Elmer Moore, I'm sir? No, Samuel Boone, I'm in charge. Okay. Samuel Boone, B -O -O -N. Okay, would all of you raise your right hands, please? or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Um, so is Mr. Moore present? No. He sent you? Microphone, yeah, sir. Can you s stand by the phone? I mean the microphone. No, I am in charge. I'm the exalted ruler. Okay. Representing uh, the, the health laws, 1043. Okay. Uh, and do you admit that the these uh, violations occurred on July 12th of this year? Yeah. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Um, do you want to explain to the board what happened on that evening? R really, I have nothing to say on that part because I wasn't there when it occurred. I was at another large function. Um, only thing I could say, we just threw ourselves on the mercy of the court. Okay. Um, so, uh, with respect to the second violation, um, 
so a little uh, Mr. Akris, this this is a violation because it w was open for general consumption. Cor well, the general public uh, to be served uh, by a Class C uh, beer wine liquor licensee, the individual must have a membership with the Class C establishment or be a guest of a Class C uh, sta a cla sorry a guest of a member of the Class C establishment. Okay. In this case, the facts show that the cadet was not correct. Okay, and you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Um, who went in? Who? So, uh, and detective, were they cooperative? When and, and I will say, on the behalf of this establishment, they're very strong, brave, hardworking people. It was just a lapse in their security. They do have a buzzer in the door where it's locked. It just got in. Uh, we were six, we were lucky. Let's put it that way. And you're not a member of the Elks. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to be served, and I don't drink anyways. But I will mm. speak to the the individuals inside because we've been in there a couple times. So very good young establishment. Okay, and th they've had this license since 1973, even longer than the prior guys, and there we had one violation uh, back in 1997, so it's been a very long time. So, uh, understood, and I appreciate, again, uh, your being candid with us, uh, Mr. Boone. So, the commissioners have questions? I don't have any questions. I do not. Okay, on uh, the basis then, do you, yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, all of them had training on the alcohol awareness, and under our new policy, which, uh, the alcohol service policy for our employees, they all signed it, and to better ourselves and handling situations like what we went through. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you. Okay. So uh, on the basis then of the materials that are contained in the charging documents, the testimony received, uh, and the admission, I'd, admissions, I'd find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on July 12, 2018, as well as a violation of Rule 4.20, small d, small double i, on July 12, 2018. And in light of this uh, very good record, I would um, impose a $200 fine as to each uh, for a total of $400 and give you 30 days to pay. I too find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on July 12, 2018, and a violation of Rule 4. Point two zero small d small uh, double i on July 12, 2018, and I concur with the imposition of a $200 fine as to each, 30 days to pay given the history and the testimony that, that, that they've been uh, cooperative. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if we w if the, the, the ladies wanted to comment. Did you have something else to add, ladies? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I too. Uh, He's always very sensitive about the women. Who come. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to take that, but uh, I'll take it in, in light of uh, in good spirit. So uh, I find a violation of Rule 4.01A, as well as a violation of Rule 4.20D, uh, two little I, and would agree with the imposition of a fine of $200 for each. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, if you can step down here, Ms. Russell will explain to you, okay? Let's call exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore State Police Department Report, Detective Gatto. Board Exhibit 2, Baltimore State um, Liquor Board Investigation Report, Agent Krista Malice. Thank you. Calling the next case, Michael Donovan, John uh, Durkin, and Michael Malisone. Thames Street, Baltimore, LLC, trading as Barcosina, 1629 Thames Street. This is a Class B beer, wine, liquor license. Violation of alcoholic beverage rule 4.01A, sales to minors. Council. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, not Mr. Acting Chairman, <laughs> members of the board. Appreciate that. Peter Previs on behalf of the licensees. Um, one of the licensees, Michael Donovan, is to my right, and the manager, I'm sorry. Young. Mr. Young is, is also here. Okay. Would all of you folks raise your right hands, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Mr. Previs, is it admission? It, it, it's a denial, and the only reason for the denial, Mr. Chairman, is that the, the cadet who was alleged to have been served is, uh, is not with us today, and I would move to dismiss on that basis. Okay. He was uh, subpoenaed by the board, and he's not present. I, I understand he's no longer a cadet. What is the situation? 
Agent Chris Malice, Baltimore City Local Board. Cadet James is no longer with the Baltimore City Police Department. Uh, and he was issued a subpoena? He was. Did while not. he was a member of the Baltimore City Police Department. And he doesn't think the law applies to him now because he's left the police department? Can't answer that, Your Honor. Um, um, is there a motion? Motion, Your Honor. I'd grant the motion. Thank you, sir. Motion to dismiss granted. I'm sorry, what? End of that case. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you. Any exhibits that call? Do we call exhibits or no? I mean, it's, it's nothing's no. been entered into evidence. Okay. It's just dismissed. Okay. Calling the next case, Robert uh, Makarovich and Jamie Makarovich, Rob Jam Incorporated, trading as Clipper Mill, 1619 Union Avenue. It's a Class B beer wine liquor license, a violation of alcoholic beverage rule 4.01A, sales to minors. Council. Um, good afternoon. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and fellow commissioners. My name is Kevin O'Keefe on behalf of Mr. Makarovich and Clipper Mill. Uh, good morning. Would you all raise your right hands, please? As you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, Mr. O'Keefe, is this going to be an admission or denial? Well, I would like to ask for dismissal in light of um, Cadet James not being present. Was he subpoenaed for this case? Yeah. Well, I have to be consistent. How many cases does he have? After this one. Correct. Um, so I'm going to grant the motion. The uh, I must say, though, is it, is it Mr. Makarovich? Makarovich, I'm sorry. Um, you have had the license for about 11 years, um, and this is the third time uh, here. So you get close to a situation where we would not be happy if this case went forward. So be careful. But I'll grant the motion to dismiss. Call the next case, Russell Schaefer Jr., Island House Incorporated, trading as Island House Bar and Grill, 4330 East Lombard Street. This is a Class BD7 beer wine liquor license, a violation of alcoholic beverage rule 4.01A, sales to minors, and a violation of rule 4.16, illegal conduct. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Previs on behalf of the licensee, Russell Schaefer, Jr., who is to my right. Good morning. Also Can I ask them all to raise their right hand? Sure. You swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Mr. Previs, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, also with us here today is Mr. Clinton Spencer and Ms. Susan Hawkins, who are the applicants for the transfer of the license. This has to do with the second charge of the violation of four, four, Rule 4.16 with regard to the trader's license. Uh, I, I make a motion to dismiss the 4.01 based on the fact that Cadet Reginald James is not here. Uh, I te technically, well, I'm going to admit the violation with an explanation with regard to the trader's license. The trader's license was obtained in the new name, the transferee's name. Let's, let's come back to that in a second. So uh, with respect to the 4.01 small a violation, I'll grant the motion to dismiss on the same basis as previously. Um, as to the illegal conduct violation, so the trader's license um, uh, if had I not been issued. If I can explain, Mr. Chairman. What? Yes, sir. Um, the, the, the trader's license renews on May 1. At that time, Mr. Schaefer and Ms. Hawkins went to the trader's license, and the trader's license folks said, why, why don't you just... Who issues those? The uh, clerk in the sixth floor of the courthouse. Um, so the, the, they explained that the, the, the place was under contract, and they said, why don't we just transfer it into, in our records into the new name? However, they needed a use and occupancy permit in order to actually issue the license. It hadn't been issued yet. So it hadn't been issued in the new name until August 2nd. This, this, so from, from May 1 to August 2nd, the, the, they were in the process, but it hadn't technically been issued. Is there a trader's issued. license active it, now? It is, yeah. and Ms. Hawkins has a copy on her phone. Okay, and what's the 
Club, it, it, Club Expectations LLC with an X. At this location? At this location. I, the transfer application was filed. It's under the, uh, the August cycle. I don't think it's been <coughs> scheduled for a hearing yet. But the transfer application was filed for the August cycle. Okay, so when you, when you okay, I'm just curious, so when the clerk learned that you didn't have your use and occupancy permit, what did they tell you? No, I, if I can explain. <laughs> the clerk has a checklist for issuance of the traders, and they want to know that you have a food permit, and they want to know that you have a trader's license, and they want to know that your personal property tax bill is okay. And then they look in the computer for the state comptroller to make sure there's no sales tax issues. So one of, the, one of those items that held them up was that they wanted a trader um, use permit in the new name and they would issue the traders in the new name. So Ms. Hawkins got the inspections, which puts us way ahead of the game as far as the liquor license transfer. But that's that's it didn't, that, it, it that didn't took time. Okay. So it's kind of a snafu. All right. Do the commissioners have questions? Any other questions? I don't. Anything from okay. Um, on the basis of the materials contained here and your uh, proper counsel and any testimony received in the admission, I'd find a violation of Rule 4.16 on July 30, 2018. There's no history of violations, and this sounds like, um, to me, a bit of a snafu. I'd impose a $100 fine and give you 30 days to pay it. I, too, find a violation of four point, Rule 4.16, and I concur with the $100 fine, 30 days to pay. I, I too find a violation of Rule 4.16 and would concur with the imposition of a $100 fine. And I assume we've granted the uh, motion to dismiss. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good luck. The new place. Oh, Thank you. Got to call exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore State Police Department Report, Detective Greenhill. Board Exhibit 2, Baltimore State um, Liquor Board Investigation Report, Agent Chris Malice. Thank you. Thank you. Call the next case, Matthew Cahill and Jeffrey Cahill, Mac Hospitality Group, LLC, trading as Licorice, 801 East Ford Avenue. There's a Class D beer wine liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, and violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct. What is your name, sir? Jeffrey Cahill. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Would you raise good your right morning. hand as well as these other gentlemen? or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Uh, Mr. Cahill, you're charged with two violations, sale to minor on May 24 and illegal conduct on July 27. Do you admit or deny those violations? What is the illegal conduct? It says here that about 1.55 p.m., the staff here from the board conducted a review of the trader's license of Mac Hospitality Oh, yes, LLC yes, um, yes, sir. And found it wasn't issued. May I? Give you can a in slide. a second, but okay, sure. do you admit that or deny it? Uh, I do admit that, yes. Sir. How about the sale to the minor? I do. Okay. Now you may explain whatever you'd like. Uh, okay. I do have a letter from my tax attorney. About the last uh, second? About the trader's license. Okay. Yes. It, Thank you, sir. Let's see. We'll receive this. Let me see. Yes, sir. If it's not a long letter. It's no, not. sir. It just says. Brevity is the soul of please expression. Please be advised that we have filed all necessary documents, including sales tax returns and payments to bring the company into current status. Also, the company is in good standing with the Department of Assessments and Taxation. We expect to obtain a trader's license certificate Tuesday, September 4 or Wednesday, September 5. Uh, and this is from Mr. Kent Omer, who is a CPA, right? Yes, sir. Um, okay. And, and you admit that. Um, uh, Mr. Z uh, Cadet Zo was sold a Corona beer on May 24th? He is here, correct. Okay. Any explanation okay. for that? Uh, yes. Totally my fault. I've been doing this about 40 years. I feel bad about this. I knew better. I was upstairs doing some paperwork, got a call from my sous chef, we're busy, came down, and then I was like, who can I help? And then he was the first person. And then when I grabbed the beer, I realized, ooh, and then of course the whole process was... Um, okay. Um, cooperative? Yes. Okay. Commissioners? I don't have any questions. No questions. All right. Thank you. I appreciate your candor. Yes, um, sir. And so on the basis then of the materials containing the charging documents, your testimony, and your admissions, I'd find a, a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on May 24, 2018, and of Rule 4.16 on July 27, 2018. As to the former, uh, having no history of violations, I'd impose a $300 fine, and as to the latter, a $100 fine, and give you 30 days to pay. 
I2 find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors on May 24, 2018, and a violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct on July 27, 2018, and I concur with the $300 fine as to the first violation and $100 fine as to the second violation, 400 total with 30 days to pay. I find a violation of Rule 4.01A and agree with the imposition of a $300 fine. I also uh, find a violation of Rule 4.16 and agree with the imposition of a $100 fine. Thank you, sir. Thank good you. luck. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Appreciate it. Thank you. I call exhibits for the record. Licensee Exhibit 1, letter from Licensee CPA. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department Report, Detective Gatta. I'm sorry, Detective Greenhill. Okay. Board Exhibit 2, Baltimore City Liquor Board Investigation Report from Agent Clark. Thank you. On the next case, Stephen Jackson and Ronald Zimmerman, Z and J LLC, trading as Rowan Tree, 1633 South Charles Street. This is a class BD7 beer wine and liquor license, violation of rule 4.01A, sales to minors. Would you gentlemen raise your right hands because you're going to testify. I swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay, so the board has received a letter from... Uh, Mr. Z uh, Zimmerman. Mr. Ronald Zimmerman, indicating that while he is unable, he's been served, but he was unable to attend this morning, but he wanted us to accept his letter as an admission that this uh, violation did occur on May 24, 2018. Um, and so my question to you is, was he cooperative when that happened? Okay. Um, well, on the basis of his admission, which has been received in writing, it will be made part of the record and the charging documents, uh, and his admission, I would find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, on May 24, um, 2018. I'd impose, he has no history, I'd give him a $300 fine and give him 30 days to pay, and we'll convey that information to him if the other commissioners agree. I, too, find a vi violation of Rule 4.01A, small a, sales to minors on May 24, 2018, and I concur with a $300 imposition of a fine, 30 days to pay. I find a violation of Rule 4.01A and agree with the imposition of a $300 fine. Thank you. I have to call the exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department Report, Detective Gatto. Board Exhibit 2, Baltimore City Liquor Board Investigation Report, Agent Krista Malice. Board Exhibit 3, Statement of Guilt from Licensee. Thank you. Calling the next case, Catherine Barrett, Robert Cobb, and Matthew Russell. Cobb Theaters, Rotunda LLC, trading as Cinebistro at the Rotunda, 711 West 40th Street. This is a Class B beer wine liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors. Adam Scharf on behalf of the licensees. I'm sorry, how do you spell your last name? S-C-H-A-R-F-F. -F. Hold on a second. I'm Scharf. Behind here. Adam Scharf, spell that again. S-C-H-A-R-F-F. -F. Would everyone else please raise their right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Mr. Sharp, your client's charged with the sale to minor violation on May 24, admission or denial? This will be an admission. Okay. Do they want to testify or you want to explain? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we just want to obviously... Name, please. This is Matt Russell. I'm the regional director with Cine Bistro. Uh, with an admission, we also want to make sure that the council understands that we take this matter very seriously. We have gone through training with all of our team members, including the bartender who was immediately terminated for not following not just our in-house rules, but also the national alcohol service training that he's received and certified to do so. So we just want to make sure it's understood that in no way, shape, or form does this reflect our feelings or policies on this matter. Commissioners have questions? No questions. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. I do as well. No questions. Yeah, and, and just so we're clear, I mean, um, that may have been the absolutely appropriate thing to do. We don't require that people who make a mistake, and this is the first one, lose their jobs over it. Maybe it was good for him. I don't know. Um, but just that they uh, be capable of learning and, and right. adhering in the future. So if, if you were to tell us that right. he was remorseful and admitted his mistake and you gave him another chance, that would have been all right with us as well. We okay. We okay. Um, so uh, anything further, Mr. Scharf? 
I would just add, I'm not sure if it's been said before, but this was their first offense. Uh, that's our record as well. Okay. Anything, Commissioner? No. All right. Thank you. On the basis then of the material contained in the charge, and I didn't ask, were they cooperative with you? No. Okay. On the basis then of the materials contained in the charging documents, uh, the testimony and admission, I would find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, on May 24, 2018. It's the first offense. I'd impose a $300 fine and give them 30 days to pay it. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, sales to minors on May 24, 2018, and I concur with the imposition of a $300 fine and 30 days to pay. I find a violation of Rule 4.01a and would agree with the imposition of a $300 fine. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I call exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department Report, Detective Gatto. Board Exhibit 2, Baltimore City Liquor Board Investigation Report, Agent Clark. Thank you. Calling the next case. John Burke, Charles Jurdy, and Carrie Pottles, Wicked Sisters, LLC, trading as Wicked Sisters, 3845 Falls Road. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors. Your name, sir? Hello. Uh, Charlie Jury, Charles Jurdy, G-J-E-R-D-E. Good morning. Would you raise your right hand, please, as well as the inspector? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Mr. Jurdy, you're charged with a sale of the minor on May 24. Do you admit or deny? Admit. Okay, thank you. You want to explain what happened? Um, the bartender mistook the cadet for one of his regulars who also drinks Corona and just put it on the bar and made the mistake. He's a good bartender, but <laughs> obviously made a bad mistake that night. Was he cooperative with you? No. Okay. Uh, I will say I like your establishment. No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but that won't color my uh, <laughs> my ruling. Um, do the commissioners have questions? Questions? No questions. Okay, thank you. On the that you have no history of violations. You've had the license about um, two years plus. Correct. Yes. So on the basis then of the materials contained in charging documents, your testimony and admission, I'd find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on May 24, 2018, and I'd impose a $300 fine and give you 30 days to pay. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, sales to minors on May 24, 2018, and I concur with a $300 fine in 30 days of pay. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01a and would agree with the imposition of a $300 fine. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. I call exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department Report, Detective Greenhill. Board Exhibit 2, Baltimore City Liquor Board Investigation Report, Agent Clark. Thank you. Calling the next case, James H. Persing Jr. Uh, and James H. Persing Sr., JARP Incorporated, trading as JP's, 528 South Bolden Street, is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors. Your name, sir? James H. Persing Sr. Uh, good morning. Would you raise your right hand, please? Swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Mr. Person, you're charged with a sale to minor violation on May 25. Do you admit or deny it? Uh, I admit it because, and I wasn't there at the time. Mm -hmm. My bartender was there, and it was a slow night. We have a buzzer system also in our door so that we control who comes <coughs> in, in our establishment. Uh, I've been there since 1987, that's 31 years about, and uh, I haven't been before the board. That's true. For Your that. buzzer system worked until worked. May yes. 25. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, how did he get past the buzzer? Well, he, he was let in, he must have looked all right, and, uh, and like I say, the, so you my, don't bartender, my bartender was very lax, and I do have a system of uh, going through and training or all new employees and or our, our regular employees every so often to d bring them up to date of uh, what is going on. Uh, I, was he cooperative with you? Yes. Okay. Commissioners? 
No questions. No questions. All right, Mr. Persing, on the basis of the materials that were contained in the charging documents, your testimony and admission of a violation, I would find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, on May 25, 2018. Uh, you've had this license a long time. It's your first violation. I'm going to pose a $300 fine and give you 30 days to pay it. <laughs> Thank you. I too find a violation of Rule 4.01, a, sa uh, small a, sales to minors on May 25. 25th, 2018, and I concur with the $300 fine and 30 days to pay. I find a violation of Rule 4.01A and would agree with the imposition of a $300 fine. Thank you, sir. General. I close it for the record. What is it, one? Bomber City Police Department report. Detective Gatto. Number <coughs> two, Bomber City Liquor Board investigation report. Agent Clark. Thank you. Call the next case. Ajay Handu and Veronica Romans, Mr. Mr. LLC, training as Hopkins Deli, 110 West 39th Street. This is a Class B beer, wine, liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors. Your name, sir? Parampreet Singh. Could you spell it for us, please? It's P as in Paul, A R A M as in Mary, P as in Paul, R. E as in Edward, E as in Edward, T as in Tom. Last name Singh, S-I-N-G-H. Good morning. Would you raise your right hand, please? I swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Mr. Singh, you're charged with a, well, are you on the license as well? Are you, do you manage the I store? I manage them. Okay. And uh, the licensee sent you here to represent yes. them? Okay. Uh, so they are charged with a violation of uh, sale to minor on May 24, 2018. Do you admit or deny that it occurred? Okay. So what happened at that date? Well, wrong judgment. I don't know. Uh, we've, you know, we are in very carefully, like, check everybody's ID. But I guess that day the particular employee failed to. He is no longer with us. And uh, yeah, yeah, it happened. So. Cooperation. Okay. I'm glad to hear that you're my neighbor. Commissioners <laughs> <laughs> have questions. I don't have any questions. I do not. So, Mr. Singh, this is the second violation. Although you've had this license, they've had this license about 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, the once before it occurred. So, I would find a violation based on the charging documents, uh, your testimony, and admission. I'd find a violation of Rule 4.01A on May 24, 2018, and I would impose a $500 fine and give you 30 days to pay. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, on May 24, 2018, and given that this is the second violation of this kind, I concur with a $500 fine as well. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01A and would uh, agree with the imposition of the $500 fine. Mr. Singh, as you probably know, if you come back in on a particularly the same charge, it won't be, it'll be a little bit more, it, it could be serious. Oh, it's getting I, more and more serious as <laughs> you've gone through two. So be so careful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to pause this for the record. Board of one, Baltimore City Police Department report, Detective Greenhill. Board of Zippet two, Baltimore City Liquor Board Investigation Report, Agent Clark. Mr. Akris, is that our morning docket? That concludes the morning docket, Mr. Chair. Okay, we'll resume at 1. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's afternoon docket. Today's Thursday, August 30th, 2018. Uh, this afternoon's docket will consist of violation hearings. When your case is called, please step forward to the microphone and state your name clearly. In the microphone, we're being recorded, uh, both audio and video. If you're going to be providing testimony, please also be prepared to be sworn in uh, by the clerk reporter at the end of the dais. If you have an electronic device, please silence that uh, device or uh, put it on vibrate. Calling the first case, Jeffrey Bowen, 
Bender's Tavern, LLC, trading as Bender's, 301 South Ann Street. It is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. It's a violation of rule 4.01A, sales to minors. Uh, all those who are going to testify, please come forward. Raise your hands. Just wait a minute. We need the inspector. All right, everyone, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Is one of you Jeffrey Bowen? Yes, sir. Good morning yes, or good, good afternoon. Okay. Um, so you were charged with a sale to minor violation on April 19. Do you wish to admit or deny that that happened? No, we didn't. Okay, so you're admitting that. Yes. So do you want to explain to the board what happened? Yes, it was a, a momentary lapse. We're not a college bar by any stretch. We're a neighborhood bar that services young working professionals in the neighborhood. Um, all of our clientele walk there. Um, and that, that was just a, a momentary lapse by um, Mr. Shelf on here. And are you the? Yes, sir. You're the gentleman who sold? Yes, sir. It? Okay. So um, you understand, did you just forget the card? I or the, I understand the gravity of it. I, I don't want to make excuses. I uh, need your name, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, sir. It's Michael Shelfant, C-H-A-L-F-A-N-T. Um, I definitely understand the gravity of it. As you said, it was definitely Michael, a, I believe a you said right. Michael. Michael, I'm sorry. Uh, so that was, and honest, it, that's, it was just a very momentary lapse. Since then, I've been absolutely stringent on it. I understand the importance of it. Um, yeah, okay. Like I said, I don't want to make any excuses or anything. Inspectors, was, uh, were they cooperative? They were. Okay. So uh, as far as a record, we have, you've had the license about six years, and uh, we have one, um, some violations back in 14 for hours and cooperation, but nothing on sales to minors, right? Correct. Commissioners? I don't have any questions. No questions, but I recall, Mr. Shalfant, you were here before, so yes, thank you for coming um, oh, no. last time and being here as well. So My responsibility, you know. And for your candor. Oh, no. What's that? Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, all right, so on the basis then of the materials contained in the charging documents and your testimony and admission, I would find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, on April 19, 2018. Um, and you've, you've got these earlier violations, but although they're not for the same thing, I would impose a $400 fine and give you 30 days to pay it. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01, small a, sales to minors on April 19, 2018, and I concur with the the imposition of a $400 fine and 30 days to pay. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01A and would agree with the imposition of a $400 fine. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. I pause for the record. Thank you. What is it, the one, Baltimore City Police Department report, Detective Greenhill. What is it, the two, Baltimore City Liquor Board Investigation Report, Inspector Perez. What is it, the three, email support from neighbor, Brian Seal, dated 725-2018. Thank you. Calling the next case, Luis George, 2 Louis Cantina, LLC. Trading is 2 Louis Cantina Bar and Grill, 200 South Haven Street. This is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors, violation of Rule 3.03C, records. Counsel? Abraham, Abraham Hurd on behalf of 2 Louis Cantina, LLC. With me is my client, Mr. George. Uh, Mr. George and uh, inspectors, uh, uh, detective, would you raise your right hands, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, your client is charged with the sale to minor violation and a records violation. Admissions or denials? We admit that this was a sale to minor. We're doing everything we can at this time to rectify the situation. We're trying to get the records resolved. Um, I think there was an issue with regards to the business being in good standing, which has been corrected. Um, so that's no longer a concern. Uh, my client is looking into having every uh, employee of the location alcohol awareness certified. And we're trying to get a uh, card scanner as well so that everyone's ID will be run. Everybody who handles alcohol um, and who works there, frankly, if there is somebody who's between that kind of 819 to 21 age, um, will be checking these things and kind of going through the proper checklist. What's the issue with the records? I guess it said that the employee records was not on-premises. 
Right. Yeah, why? How, are you, how are you rectifying that? We're making sure we have them on premises. All the way, that's the simple solution to that problem. And what was their reaction? Okay, so um, Mr. George has a um, consistently bad record. Um, he's had the we license since Absolutely. 2011 with violations in almost every year, which makes it difficult. But um, do commissioners have questions? If I may address that just briefly. Uh, Mr. George is kind of a, a newer client with regards to this location for me. I sat down with him, and one of the things that struck me as, and I'm sure it struck you guys, is this extensive list of violations. One of the things that him and I are working on is not just the alcohol awareness, um, but also kind of the other things that seem to be plaguing him. I think there was an issue with regards to the housing certification, some sort of inspection issue, um, and other things. So we're working to kind of do a comprehensive walkthrough in terms of all areas of this business, in terms of all the different permits, the liquor license, how the mint business is managed, just to try to prevent some of these things that are preventable from happening again. I think a lot of these things could easily be prevented with just a little more foresight. And Mr. George certainly agrees with me based on our discussions we've had um, over the past few weeks. Um, he has a full-time secretary that's a new addition to his staff who's also been involved in this process. Um, and we're all three working together to try to, again, you know, I think a little bit of effort will go a long way. I think a lot of effort will go even further in this situation. How, how often is Mr. George at the establishment? I'm um, just about uh, mostly the weekends every night, but during the week, you know, really, you know, it's not much you know, business going on. So Thursday to Sunday. Okay, so you have a, you have other employment, I assume. Um, just no. Just, okay. yeah, just I mean, one of the things that uh, I think that is of concern, and I, I to some degree, I, well, I agree with Mr. Hurdle that some of these things are basic nuts and bolts running the business. <coughs> uh, but it does concern me that it doesn't sound like you're on premises enough. Um, to make sure that some of these things are in place. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I do note that um, I'm not familiar with the illegal conduct, but I, the only other, you had a sales to minor which was dismissed in 2012. So generally speaking, these are sort of basic, you know, rule regs stuff that you know, in the normal course you should be addressing. So how many employees do you have? Um, there are four. Four. And is there a full-time manager or full-time? Full-time full manager, okay. as well as myself. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything further? Okay. okay. I mean, again, we're trying to address all these issues. Uh, Mr. George and I have planned to sit down, you know, I wouldn't say for weekly meetings, but certainly on a regular basis going forward to try to keep things in check and make sure we can do everything we can to, uh, again, I think that there certainly have been missteps. We think that they can be addressed by just plain kind of taking kind of a whole issue approach to the matter. Well, I think that could be very helpful because if he continues not to address these things, he's probably looking at uh, revocation or long-term suspension. So there's significant attorney's fees. And I have no doubt about that. Um, okay, so on the basis then of the materials contained in the charging documents, the testimony received, the admissions, I find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on May 9, 2018, and a violation of Rule 3.03 small c on May 9, 2018. Um, given the record uh, as to the first violation, I would impose a $500 fine, and as to the second, a $500 fine for $1,000, and I give them 30 days to pay. So I, I, I too find a violation as to Rule 4.01A, sales to minors on May 9, 2018, and Rule 3.03C, records May 9, 2018. I'm inclined to, uh, he was in here, looks like in February, or well, he wasn't here uh, in February. I'm inclined to, uh, to go a little bit higher and say uh, 700 for the first, as to the first violation and 500 as to the second violation. If I may, and I, ha I haven't looked at the extensive record in full detail, I don't want to cause any issue. I believe this may be his first sale to minor violation that is. It's the first one that hasn't on been, record. It's been sustained. And I think it doesn't the law require, isn't the maximum 500 in that situation? I'm not sure. Is it 1,000? It is 1,000. The hall seems to be saying a thousand, so yes. my mistake. I yes. apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Um, 
Right, and and there also seems yeah. Okay. Well, I I too find a, a violation of Rule 4.01a, um, and would concur with Commissioner Hafey at a $700 fine, and uh, I too find a violation of Rule 3.03c and would agree with the imposition of a $500 fine. Okay, so it's $1,200 plus the administrative fee, and he has 30 days to pay. Thank you. Will we excuse? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to call this episode of the record. What is it? One, Baltimore City Police Department report. Detective Gatto. What is it? Two, Baltimore City um, Liquor Board report from Inspector Hahn. Thank you. Calling the next case, Sumrit Dead A Chanakul and Rajwant Kaur, 1269 Washington Incorporated, trading as Chris Liquor and Grill, 1269 Washington Boulevard. This is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors. The record, Melvin J. Kanansky, 320 North Charles Street, uh, representing the um, <coughs> licensing. Good afternoon. Would everyone raise their right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Uh, Mr. Kinesi, we have an admission or denial? We'll do an admission. Okay. Um, good mood today. Glad to hear that. Uh, and what happened on May 9? Well, in this case here, there was a, a lapse. Me and Mrs. Uh, Coward, who's been running the place, uh, it, it really is a tough place here. As you can see before, there was a People were walking in and out with drinks, and she was trying to stop them. She got assaulted at one time. That was the prior time, so she, she's a little bit leery, you know, to challenge people back and forth. Um, uh, Mr. Summer in here, he was a, a prior owner, owns the property. He's also going to try to help out in this situation to try to get this thing uh, in a, a little better um, method of uh, checking people because she feels sometimes intimidated. As you, I don't know if you were here the last time they had the case. And I think from now on they're going to be checking everybody's car, cards and, and um, they won't have that problem. They had a, one prior sale of the minor about three, four years ago in 14. Cooperative? Uh, they were cooperative, uh, Your Honor, and I'll, and I'll say that they recently just passed a cadet test. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners? Are there any questions? I, I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions. On the basis then of the materials containing the charging documents, the um, proper from counsel the testimony and the admission, I find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on May 9, 2018. Um, the second offense, I would uh, impose a $500 fine and give them 30 days to pay. I too find a violation of Rule 4.01 a sales to minors on May 9, 2018, and I concur with the imposition of a $500 fine with 30 days to pay. Find a violation of Rule 4.01a and would agree with the imposition of a $500 fine. Thank you. I'd like to for the record. Board of Civil One, Baltimore City Police Department report, Detective Greenhill. Board of Civil Two, Baltimore City Liquor Board investigation report, Inspector Hahn. Calling the next case, Claudia Cardona, Glenn Izaccheri, and Ricardo Ewell. Wendy's Bar Incorporated, trading as uh, Byzantio Cafe Bar, 4616 through 18 Eastern Avenue. This is a class BD7 beer wine liquor license violation of Rule 4.01A, sales to minors. For the record, Melvin J. Nancy 320 North Charleston, representing the licensing. Good afternoon. Uh, would you raise your right hand, please, ma'am, and these gentlemen? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Admission or denial, Mr. This Kennedy? would be an admission in this yeah. case here. There was a, a temporary person, person was not familiar with his work and who's no longer associated with the um, establishment. I've gone over uh, with the licensee the things that they have to check. Um, you know, thankfully, it's not a kind of place that has a, you know, a history of, of serving um, uh, minors. Uh, they know now to be very attentive to every person that comes in and to make sure they um, check their... Um, uh, ID, so I don't think they're going to see that happen again. I think it's the first time offense for them. Is that Ms. Cardona to your right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, cooperative? Commissioners? 
No questions. No questions. All right, thank you. On the basis of the materials containing <coughs> the charging documents, the proffer from counsel, the admission, and any testimony received, I find a violation of Rule 4.01 small a on May 9, 2018. I'd impose a $300 fine and give her 30 days to pay. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.01A, Sales to Minors, on May 9, 2018, and I concur with a $300 fine, 30 days to pay. I find a violation of Rule 4.01A and would agree with the imposition of a $300 fine. Thank you. Positive is for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Bomber City Police Department Report, Detective Gatto. Board Exhibit 2, Bomber City Liquor Board Investigation Report, Inspector Hahn. Calling the next case, Goya Choi, Jin Young Seo, and Alfonso Lee Wiggins, Club 4040 Incorporated, trading as Club 4040 Liquor and Grocery, 2139 through 43 Pennsylvania Avenue. This is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.20C, 2II, class BD7 licensees open and operating tavern at all times. Uh, would you raise your right hands, please, everyone? I do swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. What is your name, sir? My name is Koya Choi. Um, okay, and are you Ms. So? Yes. yes. Okay, um, so you're charged uh, on June 13 of this year uh, with indicating that the uh, tavern part of your establishment was not open when it was required to be. Do you admit that or deny that? Uh, I agree, sir, but, you know, I, I try to, I couldn't hear I'm you. sorry, I just trying to tell you, like, I was, I was all day, and then my co-workers worked there, and then inspector, when inspector come to my store, the, he shake the hand troublemakers. My store, like, the, you know, top Jones, so the guys was fight in the bar, at the bar. That's why we not serve them. And then when inspector come in and they shake hand and talk something, that's why my coworkers, they thought about the same crew. So that's what we worry about, so we not serve them. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, we weren't there for this. Okay, so you don't have any personal knowledge of it? I'll, I'll, I'll defer it. Do you want me to Sure. Uh, yes. You need to raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Uh, Thomas Akris, for the record, Deputy Executive Secretary. Uh, the inspector who was summoned as a part of this case, Mr. Ryan Crowder, uh, has failed to appear. We've issued him uh, a uh, summons, and uh, he was informed verbally earlier today that he uh, needed to be here. He had uh, called out uh, approximately maybe about five or ten minutes ago. Uh, I what does that mean, called out? He's taken a personal day. Oh. <laughs> How convenient for him. Um, he works for us? Yes. <laughs> Maybe not much longer. Your Honor, I was, we were there, but we have no knowledge of what happened inside. That's what I meant. I, we were outside in the car. Okay. And you're saying, uh, Mr. Choi, that there was a fight in your tavern. I mean, you know, not, not that day. The troublemakers, like, a few days ago. Oh, yeah, and they, so, yeah. and so your the bartender thought it was the same people coming in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm nervous. I, I could totally not understand. You don't understand. need to be nervous. I'm yeah. just trying to find out what happened. Yeah, I mean, the guy was the inside the troublemakers, so we just really be careful with them. And then the inspector come in, shake hand, and talk. So I told, I told my neighbor, I mean, I told my coworker, why you guys didn't serve the customer? I was mad. And then they say, they shake hand and talk. They thought the same crew. When they come to inside the bar, some like, they worry about the trouble. That's why they didn't serve. Okay. Um. I got a I got a video and like picture if you want to see. What he's, saying. he's basically saying that when the inspector 
enter the, the establishment, he was uh, basically shaking hands with all the people who were causing trouble in his bar. So when his bartender or whoever was overseeing things saw how uh, favorable the group that was giving them trouble was to the inspector, they didn't want him to come in uh, because it looked like he was part of the same crew or, or group. Okay. I, I think I understand what's going on. I don't know if the, do the commissioners um, have questions. I don't have any questions. I think I understand as um, well. I think I'm going to dis – I would vote to dismiss the violation. I, I agree and vote to dismiss the violation today. I would concur. Dismiss the violation. Okay. Thank you. You're free to go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. No zips. Agent Chris Mollis. Can you just make sure he understands what we did? Thank you. Thank you. I still want my shirt. <laughs> just take that one off. <laughs> it's too small of me. He said it's a small. <laughs> <laughs> then I want a kid's large. Mr. Akris. Apologies. Calling next case, Randall Etheridge III and Brendan fin Finnerty, Brendel Incorporated, trading as Idle Hour, 201 East Fort Avenue, Class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.14A, live entertainment without authorization. Uh, 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 Melvin J. Kanensky, 320. North Charles to representing the licensees. Good afternoon. Would you gentlemen all raise your right hands, please? We swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Yes. Okay. Um, so admission or denial, denial. Mr. K denial. Okay. Um, so who was there? Chairman, Agent Chris Malis, Baltimore City Liquor Board. We were there part of the social task force. This violation was issued by um, special investigator from the housing department. So I'll let him testify on to his findings. Okay. Your name, sir? Charles Hensler, Special Enforcement Officer, Department of Housing, Special Investigations Unit. H-E-N-S-L-E-R? Correct. On January 19, 2018, at 8.30 p.m., I responded to 201 East Fort Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland. Upon my arrival, I observed a violation consisting of a female behind the bar with two turntable uh, record styles, which I have photographs of. She was actually um, DJing, just jockeying the music for the people. Photographs were taken and the citation was issued. Okay. And they, they w didn't have permission to, to have live entertainment. Okay. Questions for the inspector? Yeah. You uh, also, somebody mentioned that there, there was a microphone for the DJ. I believe there was, yes, if you look close at the photograph. We have them. Okay, we here. have them right here. Was it, did you go to the environmental control <laughs> hearing? I did not. All right. Would you, do you have the findings environmental control hearing? I believe that this object right here might be the microphone. But the background, I, I, yes. No. Did you see these pictures, Mr. Kodansky? I don't know if you get those. Right. Poor stepchild. Okay. Does this be what you saw? I believe so. It looks yeah. like what's in yeah. the picture. So I told you that's not a microphone, it's a light. <coughs> Would that make any difference to you? Not to me, no. So you don't care if it's a light or a microphone? It, it appeared to be a microphone to me at the time. Okay. Did you, if I told you that the Environmental Control Board found that, that they, they don't have a microphone, that's a light, light fixture? That's the same department you work for, is that right? Uh, no, I work for the Department of Housing Special Investigation Unit. So you don't go to Environmental Control Board's a, a completely different you, entity. You don't go to I was hearings. not the custodian of records that day, no. But okay. Gentlemen, can I just interrupt for a second? So um, if they're playing music in the establishment with a DJ, but they aren't amplifying it, is it your argument that that's not a violation? Well, you have to tell me what a DJ is first. If she's behind the barn and she happens to be a bartender and just to happen to be playing, you know, songs, where it's not out in front and not talking with people. I don't know that DJ's any magic. It's just someone who works there is playing music and it's not amplified. Is it your argument that that's... Well, whether it's amplified and it doesn't make an difference. Let me give you as an example. If I have like... I thought that was your argument, though. Ten... I have ten TVs. I get infinity. 
and I'm there, and you happen to like James Brown. Play James Brown, Three Hearts in a Tangle. What, what is that? That's not live entertainment. You're playing a, a recording that you're asking Xfinity. Alexa, do this. In this case here, there was nobody speaking. There was nobody on a microphone. They thought it was a microphone, was a light. They went to the Environmental Control Board. They found, as a matter of fact, they do not have a microphone. I have the findings here. That's part of the album. That it was a, it was a light. Okay. Do you, do you want to admit that? I can. I only have one copy. I can give you. A so, uh, while they're reading, Mr. Kadensky, so is your. I want to make sure I understand your argument. Are you saying that it's because it wasn't amplified? No, no. As an example, I mean, the thing is, um, there, the person was a, a bartender, not a DJ. But they were playing music at some yeah, point, but right? I, but everything plays music. I can turn on, I can play mine here, and it doesn't, but the rule doesn't, doesn't make me a DJ. The rule doesn't say you can't have a DJ. So the DJ is irrelevant to it. The right. question is whether they were having live entertainment. They were, and it says, uh, pl uh, playing with implied, imp uh, amplified microphones. The finding was they didn't have a microphone. That's why we keep asking you if that's your argument, but you keep saying that's no. part of your argument, because <laughs> the word is in, in the conjunctive there, so it's and, not or, not in disjunctive. And so, so you, I guess your argument, too, would be that it's not, doesn't fall under similar activities. Well, with, you know, you can make any kind of, I'm, I'm going to tell you a story here, just real quickly, and I want to bore you. This is why you're the crown royal. 21 years old. Uh, my father died, I owned the bar business. I had Nick Bromwell, old bartender. He came in, he would play 20 times a day, secondhand rows. He would sing secondhand rows over and over again, you know, drive my customer. I guess you could see, consider that would be, you know, him singing, you know, being live entertainment. It explains a lot about you, though. <laughs> I think so, and <laughs> he's a Holland guy, and, and he was okay. But uh, what I'm saying is if you, you know, if somebody's just back there playing music, is it any different than having it on a TV where you're playing recorded music? Or somebody, and today you have XM radios, play music of the 50s, play music of the 60s. Let me ask a question of the inspector. Mm -hmm. If you had observed um, someone with um, the turntable turn 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 yeah, yes. without any amplification, would you have charged them? I would have. I would have believed that that was actually live entertainment. That's an actual live person playing records on one turntable, spinning another turntable such as a disc jockey would do in a radio studio or in a nightclub. What difference would that make if he's changing TV channels for play radio when you ask him to do that? You like the 60s, and you say, can you put the 60s on there for me? I wouldn't believe that the television set would fall under live entertainment, just like I wouldn't believe that the jukebox on the wall would fall under live but entertainment. But you're saying because he's, he, he or she's doing it, rather than saying it becomes live entertainment. I believe because there's an actual live person there spinning records on well, one turntable, playing music on another turntable, that is live entertainment. Just because they're playing music. Correct. Well, I disagree with that. All right. So um, we're looking at the rule itself, um, and it indicates that if a disc jockey is playing, um, disc jockey is performing with amplified microphones and equipment and similar activities. <laughs> uh, so it isn't entirely clear. Um, I think Mr. Kadensky has a, a reasonable argument. I think you saw something that looked an awful lot like live entertainment. Um, so I don't know how the commission, I, I would find a violation. I'd be lenient though, so. <laughs> well, I, I, looking at that rule and the pictures, I, I do find a violation. Um, I mean, I would, I would impose a $100 fine. and give them 30 days to pay it. But I think if they're gonna continue to do this, it would be wise if they got a permit so they don't have this problem all the time. If <laughs> I'm playing on here. I know, but you that- You can advise them not to, but what, if they'll be back here, in, if I'm, I'm playing the same music, it's just the mode the music is being played in rather than, than the th it's what it's being played on. But is that live? You're, when you're there talking to me, we're alive. Well, but, but I'm not entertainment. entertaining. I, I'm far I from don't entertainment. Think so. No, no, but it's, I'm certainly not no, entertaining. Okay. <laughs> no, my, I guess my question is the issue is whether it constitutes live entertainment, and then there's the amplification issue, right? So there's a couple different, well, the way I read it. You read all those things in the conjunctive, 
first thing, you don't have a microphone. So then you take that out. Then what do you, does that knock the whole thing out or doesn't it? It says similar well, activities. And it just says similar activities. And it also says yeah. examples but, of. But they don't give you similar. Like I was asking you, if I had Xfinity and I said, is that similar because I had so changed the channel for you? So why are you arguing with my suggestion that they get a permit? Is it too expensive? It may not. I mean, zoning may, may not give them that. Oh. I mean, they could problem. try. I'm, I'm not, that issue isn't before us today. No, 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 no. no we're just, just talking. I was just suggesting. I, I'm sure you're going to see it more than <laughs> once. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. So uh, I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.14a, little a, on January 19, 2018, and I concur with a $100 fine. Yeah, and I, to be clear, I find the same violation and on January 19, 2018. So I'm just pulling it up. I would concur with my colleagues on, um, on the violation... Uh, which is, uh, I'm sorry, roll. 4.14A. 4.14A and would agree with the $100 imposition of a $100 fine. See, because I asked the question, I suppose I had a bartender did magic tricks. That's also. That's right. Not it's, it's actually in there. Yeah. And, he right. and he makes your money disappear. <laughs> That's not entertaining. Uh, no, I didn't think so. Well, it's entertainment for that right. magician. I think you should consider this a victory, Mr. Tadansky. <laughs> right. Well, I've got these exhibits here. What should I do with them? <laughs> oh, we have them. Yeah, I, they're I got two and three. Uh, oh, oh, well, yeah. we have yeah. yes. yeah. That's Sarah Thank you. Right, thank you. Inspector. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to call exhibits for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department report from Detective Gatto. Board Exhibit 2, photo. Board Exhibit 3, photo. Calling the next case, George Dibble III, William Matriciani, and Donna Matriciani, We Dog LLC, trading as Playbook, 6700 German Hill Road, is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license, a violation of Rule 4.14A, I have entertainment without authorization, a violation of Rule 3.03C, employee records, and a violation of Rule 3.09B, restroom facilities and health regulations. Council. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Peter Previs on behalf of the licensees. With me today is Mr. Carlos Bullness, who is the manager and one of the uh, members of the uh, LLC that owns the establishment. And, and before they're sworn, I just wanted to indicate that I'm going to recuse myself from this decision because Mr. Matriciani is, is my cousin and I shouldn't be sitting on it, so I'm going to excuse myself. Thank you, sir. <coughs> May I raise your right hands, please? You swear or affirm the, tel the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the Me truth. Do. I do. Yeah. Which I, um, is the truth? Find his last name. Uh, B U L N E S. First name Carlos. Uh, Commis one of us Commissioner Greenfield is going to serve as acting chair again. Okay. Only for you, <laughs> Mr. Previous, because I know how much I can sit right here. Yeah, sit there. I'm going to sit here, right? Okay. Oh, right. right. Yeah, I don't have you a don't shirt. Have a shirt so. so, therefore, I don't know that I can be, or I am just purely acting. Mr. Previous, um, uh, do you we, admit or deny these? We deny the uh, live entertainment 4.14A violation. We admit the 3.03C violation and the three that's employee records available and 3.09B, restroom facilities and health regulations violation. So the last one, I just want to make clear, you admit that? Admit. Okay. Uh, deny the live First, entertainment, right. admit the other two. So um, let's hear from the um, agent or detective with respect to Rule 4.14. Yeah. For the live entertainment? Yes, sir. Uh, agent Chris Amalis, Baltimore City Liquor Board. Uh, the live entertainment uh, portion of the violation is um, – Separate elevated area within the bar with a DJ behind a booth overlooking a dance floor. So I don't know what the argument could be. Mr. Previous, any questions? Um, argument? A, qu a few questions. M Mr. Chris Amalis, what did, did you observe or did you hear music playing? I did. Okay. And did you, you described a, a, a an area where there is equipment. That's correct. Okay. 
And did you observe a person behind that equipment? I did. And what was that person doing? Um, playing music. Playing music? Playing music. Okay. Was the person performing in any way? He was not. He wasn't, he wasn't singing or anything like was that. Was he speaking through a microphone? Um, I can't recall if I heard. Maybe Inspector uh, Clark recalls that. I can't off memory remember him exactly speaking from a microphone. Okay. So you, de you definitely heard music playing Correct. through an amplified sound system. Correct. There's speakers set up throughout. Right. But you did not see the DJ performing or, or in any way trying to entertain through his either voice or his actions. Well, his actions would be playing the, playing the records to entertain the customers. Operating the mechanical equipment. Correct. The turntables? Is that correct. There was correct. turntables, um, and he, he, was, he was entertaining the dance floor, which had dancing, which... H how so? They were, he was playing music for them. Okay, he was playing music. Correct. He wasn't telling Mr. Kadensky jokes? I hope not. He probably wouldn't have clients. Okay. Though. He was, it was, it, when you, when you c conclude that he was entertaining, it was by reason of playing the music through an Correct. amplified system. Correct. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. I have no further questions. Uh, Inspector Clark, uh, yeah, do you have any, uh, anything uh, to add? No, I, I totally agree. Uh, I didn't see him uh, at the microphone at that time, but he was behind the booth uh, playing the digital equipment uh, for a selection of the songs for the crowd. Uh, with, with regard to turntables, did you were there like a, a 33 or a 45 that you would well, put? Well, it's a, like electronic device. Um, okay. They have different uh, devices now for uh, DJing equipment. Uh, so not literally the vinyl records like back in the day, but uh, the, the con contraption that it was. Okay. So when you're referring to turntable, you're not referring to a vinyl. the original DJs yeah, that used yeah. to, I don't like know back you, in the day. I, I don't yeah. know how you transcribe this for the record, but they go whacka whacka. <laughs> But but, yeah. but there there are two cylindrical, uh, some type of device. Yeah, uh, Chris. Some, yeah. If you were to uh, look at it, there would be two cylindrical uh, objects on the top of the of the of the uh, of the amplification equipment or the sound equipment. Well, there was a, a device there. I'm not specifically sure what type of device it was, but uh, Agent Chris and Malice was there to verify that part of it. Okay. There, so Thank what's you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Prius, do you have any? Um, Argument? I'm not argument, sure. Just yeah. Argument, just argument. Okay. Uh, I have a case that's not deriving through the liquor board, but through a housing court issue with regard to what is live entertainment. Um, and I respectfully disagree that just the bare fact that there's a human being behind sound equipment makes it a violation of live entertainment. And the reason I say that is the DJ has to be performing live. That is the critical issue, was the DJ performing <coughs> live. And maybe it's my age and my generation that I'm not understanding something that other people are, but I, I, I respectfully disagree, and that the person must perform live. Now, the city passed a definition of live entertainment that to me goes beyond the scope of what a reasonable person would believe would be live entertainment, but the liquor board had always taken a different view and they codified that in the 2016 rules. So the liquor board indicates ex in, in 414B, examples of live entertainment include musical acts including karaoke, I think karaoke is anti-entertainment, but that's for another day, uh, theatrical acts including stand-up comedy, plays, reviews, dancing, Dancing in the case of Rojas versus Liquor Board reported decision that um, and recreational dancing by patrons is not live entertainment. Dancing means a dance act. Uh, magic acts. Okay, disc jockeys. And this was the thing that the Liquor Board, through the chief inspector's office, had kind of come up with to distinguish between somebody pressing a button and somebody performing. Performing with amplified microphones, not, not amplifiers playing the music, but amplified the microphone where the, the DJ is part of the performance. Um, and equipment. And then and similar activities, 
doesn't modify performing with amplified microphones in the parentheses. It, 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 it juiced them generis for everything else, musical acts, theatrical, what have you. So the, the DJ, a person standing behind musical or sound amplified equipment does not make it live entertainment. What makes it live entertainment is that person performing. So I respectfully disagree that the fact that the person plays the music. It's the person putting on a show while playing the music. It's not his, his genius in his selection of music. Say, for example, um, in my generation, it would be Weasel uh, that knows everything about every song and can play something from the 50s or current. That, that person selection is not what does it, it's the person performing. So if the DJ is talking and he's uh, shout out to so-and-so, it's so-and-so's 16th birthday, let's all do that. That, doesn't ma that makes it live entertainment, but the person standing there does not make it live entertainment, and what the liquor board has tried to do through its rule to hone in on that is say there's an amplified microphone where that DJ is speaking through that microphone and performing. So I respectfully disagree. Um, the the fact that there's a DJ booth and sound equipment makes it live entertainment. So the person has to be performing. So, so but I guess I, I, I would respectfully disagree. Then that suggests that anyone with two turntables and a microphone, as the Beastie Boys would say, um, would not be live entertainment. I mean, to me, that doesn't, that doesn't uh, the facts, um, and it's not like I'm out at the clubs with DJs, but from what I gather, it is some form of entertainment. They, I don't know what you mean in terms of their performing, but the way that they do the, in your words, the wiki, 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 <laughs> to me that can be seen as entertainment. Yeah, I agree with you. But if they're doing that, right, but, but, but there's no evidence in this case. So I, the, the distinguishing factor is performed live. So if, a, so if you take the far end of the spectrum and there's uh, Muzak playing through the sound system, Nobody, nobody's gonna argue that that is live entertainment, it's just music in the background. And then the other side of the spectrum is you have a live band there, clearly live entertainment. So if you have, so if you take it in one from there is you have a person that hits play uh, on the jukebox or on the sound system, I don't think anybody would argue that that was live entertainment. If you have a DJ and that DJ is speaking through the microphone and he's putting on a show and he's famous for, for ha how, how entertaining he is and he spins around and he spins the records and he says all kinds of things, like Batman and Ocean City, uh, then that is live entertainment. But if you just have a person standing there and the evidence is there's a person standing there, he's just playing the mechanical or the, 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 the electrical mechanical equipment I and he's not performing. So. I understand your argument and I, I also disagree because he's coordinating the music. It's not simply, you know, you have turntables and it's digital. I mean, it's not simply him pressing a button. He's coordinating and ensuring that the music flows through the speakers and whatnot. So, I mean, I, I, I Commissioner don't. Commissioner goes to the clubs, by the way, <laughs> unlike the two of us. Well, I understand it a little, yeah. I understand what is going on um, when you have the turntables and, right. Okay, but you're, you're, um, um, and, 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 and I would go back to performing with amplified microphones, and there's no evidence in this case. But I don't it read it that way. I think it could be amplified. The music could be amplified. Right. I, that's how I read it. That's how I read it? Okay. There's uh, equipment, and it's amplified speakers, and we have evidence before us, or amplified microphones. We have evidence before us that there's amplification, and there's definitely equipment. Okay. I just, going back to the... the the, uh, before there was any rule, the, the chief inspectors, and that this is what the, the derivation of this rule was the chief inspector determining that the DJ has to be performing. So if there's a microphone and he only uses a microphone to say, there is a fire, please exit quietly, that wouldn't be live entertainment. But if he's entertaining over the microphone, it would. So. Well, the DJ is performing, yeah. right? So I, if he I has. I don't know how. If he has digital equipment before him, he's performing. I mean, he's coordinating the music, so he's performing. And my understanding, too, is that our rule is based in large part on the zoning code as well, so it aligns with that. But I, I would c agree with Commissioner okay. Hafey, but if you have any other final thoughts, we'll, we'll, we'd welcome it. I'll let you know if it ever gets up to the Court of Special Appeals. No, that, <laughs> that would be helpful to know what, helpful. what the, 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 the courts would say. Right.
Okay. In so any event, okay, I'm sorry. Did no, no, please. Um, we admitted the other two violations. Okay. Now, um, Mr. Priebus, uh your clients, um, as you know, has a pretty significantly awful record. And um, I don't know if you want to comment on that, but um, it is troubling. And um, if you have any in Th response we'd love yeah, to. thank you and uh, first of all in, in mitigation I admitted the the health violations um, to th and well and the employee records one thing is mr. Bullness was at a wedding in Virginia on this weekend so there is an office in the basement that's locked and his his personal dog was there and I, I think you saw that that was part of the health violation uh, he does not normally keep his dog there. Was he, he didn't have anybody else to watch his dog, so he, 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 he locked him in, in the office. The records were also locked in the office, so the manager on duty, who is no longer there, did not have access to the records, as I understand it. Detective Cairo? Uh, he, this happened seven months ago. My memory is fresh enough to know that this dog was inside a fenced-in area where there were storage there were things such as alcohol. If we, if, if we reflect the report, there was no office that I opened to discover a dog. I heard the dog barking as I was going down the stairs, and it was running around behind a caged area, which seemed to be an area where you were, where things were being stored. Okay, so I, it's office. from my recollection, having been there several times, that there, I was there, there as is well. an office. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just. We, we didn't go into a door. Let's put it that way. This yeah. dog was behind a, a fence the, that the, was in the I'm basement. The, the office is in a caged area with a, a lock, and it's 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 all caged. But it is an office. I've had meetings with my clients there several times, and there is storage down there as well. So I, unless there's another area, and I'm I'm not no, remembering right. Well, but I was just trying to reflect the yeah. what it looked like when I was there. You know, we have an animal back there where there's goods. And it, it, in, in my opinion, because I'm no, uh, I'm not trying to be an animal advocate, but that's the, the music and the sound, and we all know a dog's ears are much more elevated than ours, had to be somewhat disturbing for this animal to be down there and hearing this pumping music the whole time. It's just reflecting off the, off the walls. And it, it, to me, it, was, it, was, it didn't need to be there. There could have been another place other than a club on a Friday or a Saturday night in January to put this uh, this canine. Just my opinion. Thanks. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Thank you. I love dogs as well, so yeah. uh, thank you for your comments. I actually don't, but <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just it, it didn't seem like you the right place. Sympathy for the I dog. Didn't, it didn't seem like it would, to me it would be almost like finding a, a child walking around down there. It, it's a basement, mm -hmm. and it, the music is just pumping. It's a very very loud. So okay. W with regard to the uh, the uh, the other mitigating factors I wanted to bring out. There was a, um, a um, environmental control board citation that was also issued for live entertainment and there was a $500 fine and Mr. Bullness paid that. He did not attend the hearing, he just outright paid it. And was that for which? The two turntables and a microphone. Okay, gotcha, all right. Yes, uh, additionally, the health and fire department closed the premises. The the fire suppression system or the, the ANSEL system was not updated uh, and certified, and it took Mr. Bullness three entire weeks in order to have his contractor come out and do what they needed to do and get back to the health and fire to certify that it was right. So he was closed that night and three additional weeks with regard to those health violations that were also ANSEL system fire violations. Um, the manager is no longer with Mr. Bullness. He is, uh, he is there full time as well as several other members of his family. Um, the, there was a time in 2013-14 where there were several violations and then that toned down. Um, he was here in 17, uh, again with health violations that he, he did rectify. Um, and then prior to to that in 16 um, sales to minors dismissed illegal conduct, which I don't recall what that was. But anyway, in the last three years, 
there were two prior violations. The, the, there was a spate of time well before that that there were other issues, but Mr. Bulmas, is, uh, as he's matured as the manager, is getting the premises under order. It's more of a health issue. And then we can respectfully disagree about the live entertainment. This, this, this location historically was a place where bands played and Mr. Kazarowski at the funeral home across the street used to play accordion there, <laughs> he tells me back in way, way back when. Under the new zoning, I will investigate with whether it is authorized at this point. As you said in the earlier case, why can't we just get a permit and may maybe that's possible now and I'll investigate with that with him. So uh, with all that said, he, he was closed for three weeks. He did pay the $500 fine without, without issue or argument and I respectfully request the last fine was $1,500 and I request that you consider a $1,500 fine. 1,500 fine total? Total. Um, all right, Mr. Hippy, I guess I'll take a stab at this first. Sure. Okay. So I find a violation of rule 4.14A, um, I find a violation of rule 3.03C, and I find a violation of rule 3.09B. As to the first, the live entertainment without authorization, Rule 4.14a, because uh, your client paid a $500 uh, fine to the Environmental Control Board, um, I would find a violation of, uh, or an imposition of a fine of $250. With respect to uh, Rule 3.03a, the employee records, uh, I would impose a fine of $500. And in connection with the violation of Rule 3.09B, I would uh, impose a $1,000 fine. I, too, find a violation of Rule 4.14A, live entertainment without authorization, on January 20th, 2018, and I concur with the $250 fine. I, too, find a violation of three, Rule 3.03 C, employee records on January 20th, 2018, and I concur with the $550, $500 fine. And finally, I find a violation of Rule 3.09B and on January 20th, 2018, and I concur with the imposition of a $1,000 fine we with 30 days to pay. 30 days to pay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I close it was for the record. Board of Civil 1, Baltimore City Police Department report, Detective Gatto. Board of Civil 2, Baltimore City Liquor Board Investigation Report, Agent Clark. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I believe that concludes the afternoon docket. Thank you. Our next hearing date will be September 13th, 2018. Mr. Chair, thank you. Bye. Thank you.